Hello, everybody, and welcome to Iceberg to Go, your daily dose of Pittsburgh Penguins news and analysis. You can find us on YouTube at Inside the Penguins or anywhere you get your podcasts from. It is a great day for hockey, a great day for preseason hockey and the preseason finale for the Pittsburgh Penguins. It will be the last tune-up game before the game start meaning more, before two points are on the line next Tuesday against the Chicago Blackhawks and rookie sensation Connor Bedard. But some important business to attend to today and in the coming days for Kyle Dubas and the Pittsburgh Penguins as they still have a few questions with the roster that remain unanswered. And as I mentioned, the Penguins close out their preseason schedule tonight. They'll be on the road against the Buffalo Sabres. They've released their roster. It looks as if we're going to get a tune-up game. Mike Sullivan said as much that we are going to get a tune-up game, get everything going with their NHL roster, a lot of their NHL roster that is going to be taking the ice later tonight. But like I mentioned, still a couple questions that need answered. Obviously, the defense, you got to figure out who's going out there. You have five guys that are pretty much solidified. Who gets that sixth spot? Is it Chad Ruedel? And who gets that seventh spot? Is it Mark Friedman or Ryan Shea? That's a question that remains unanswered. How does this power play progress? That's another one we'll keep an eye on later today because they've only had two chances in preseason action and a little over a week when it comes to actually practicing it. Does it look a little bit better tonight against the Buffalo Sabres? And then, to me, the most important question that needs answered tonight, who will round out the Penguins' bottom six to start the season? That battle was cleared up a bit yesterday, but not to its entirety. The Penguins assigned six players to Wilkes-Barre Scranton yesterday, including forwards Avery Hayes, Rem Pitlick, Sam Poulin, and Valtteri Pustinen. They also sent two defensemen back, Ty Smith and Xavier Ouellette. In addition to that, the Penguins placed three players on waivers, Andreas Janssen, Jona Kapanen, and Alex Nylander. So, some of the names that have been in the running throughout camp, some of them long shots, some of them dark horses like a Sam Poulin or a Valtteri Pustin, in, in which we might see them at some point this season, but they were on the outside looking in coming into camp. I think both of them were very impressive during camp. I'm excited to see what they're able to do early in the season in Wilkes-Bear and if they get called up mid-season for the Pittsburgh Penguins. But a couple other players that were seemingly in the race for one of these two spots, uh, Andreas Janssen, I don't think he really ever got close, personally. I, I think that when he came into camp, there was as good of an opportunity for him as there was anybody else, and I just don't think that he capitalized on that opportunity. And Alex Nylander is somebody who, listen, he was signed before Kyle Dubas was even hired. He was signed in that dead period between the end of Ron Hextall's time in Pittsburgh and the beginning of Kyle Dubas's. He was given an opportunity in camp, and he didn't look bad. He looked good, but the problem was, and the last preseason game against Detroit was a microcosm of this. He started off hot, and he trailed away, and he faded into the background as things started to heat up. Once the opportunity shifted a little bit, because early in training camp, early on the preseason schedule, Alex Nylander's getting tons of ice time in a game. He's getting first-line reps in the game. But once these NHLers, these regular NHLers started coming into the lineup and you get your role more aligned with what you're going to be doing if you make the roster, he wasn't able to shine nearly as much. Hence the reason he was placed on waivers yesterday. We have to wait until 2 o'clock Eastern time today to find out whether or not he was claimed. And if he isn't claimed, will be safely sent down to the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins. The other name that got ruled out yesterday, not officially by him being placed on waivers or him being sent down, but Vinny Henestroza seemingly out of the running for the Penguins' bottom six to start the season. He didn't practice with the main group on Thursday, in which some of his peers, people that are also in this battle and on the bubble for the roster, did practice with them. He's not in the lineup later tonight, whereas the other four players that are battling for this bubble spot are in the lineup. Now, there's a chance that that's because, hey, we know Vinny Henestrosa is going to make the lineup spot, and we just want to see what these other four guys can do for that last spot in general. But realistically, 
it seems as if he might be on the outside looking in because you look at the rest of the roster that's out there tonight, most of it looks to be the NHL regulars, the guys that are going to be playing next Tuesday against the Chicago Blackhawks. So seemingly Vinny Henestrosa is out of the running, but not officially. So we have to wait and see how that plays out. So where does that leave the Pittsburgh Penguins? Seemingly two available roster spots on their opening roster. Again, don't ask Mike Sullivan because he will question your math because he knows that at the end of the day, it's up to him and nobody can really guess what he's going to decide and what the organization is thinking at that specific time. If you want an example for that, I've been, I've been kind of showed that twice in this preseason already. I counted redeem Zahorna out before camp even started. I said, I don't see how this guy makes the NHL roster because of guys like Vinny Anastroza, because of guys like Andreas Janssen, because of guys like Alex Nylander. Well, those three guys are out of the running. Redeem Zahorna still firm in place. And I did the same thing with Jansen Harkins earlier this week. I didn't see from what I saw from him in Winnipeg. I didn't see how he would make the team coming in in the last week of camp. But here we are, Friday, October 6th, three days away from the roster needing to be finalized. And both of those guys have a really good shot to make the opening night roster for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Four players vying for an opportunity of two spots, two of them PTO guys who we'll talk about in a minute. But I did want to start by talking about Jansen Harkins. He has quickly made a really good impression, not just on the coaching staff, but on the fan base for the Pittsburgh Penguins. He seems to potentially have the inside edge on one of these spots. And again, I don't claim to know what Mike Sullivan is thinking, but looking at what Sullivan has said about this kid and looking at how this kid performed, in the last preseason game on Wednesday against the Red Wings and the fact that he's going to be able to get another opportunity later tonight against the Buffalo Sabres. At least he's on the roster, whether or not he gets a sweater that's, you know, remains to be seen. But when you look at Sullivan's quote on him yesterday, it kind of makes it seem like they're already penciling him in to the opening night roster after practice. This is what Sullivan had to say on Jansen Harkins quote. He can really shoot the puck. He can really skate. He brings an element of physicality to our game. I think by nature of that, he's going to make us hard to play against. Again, read into it what you will. What I'm taking away from that and what it sounds like to me, it sounds like someone that Mike Sullivan expects to be hanging around for a bit longer. It sounds like somebody that Mike Sullivan expects to have at his disposal next Tuesday against the Chicago Blackhawks. So again, Watching his game on on Wednesday, it looked good. It looked real good. I mean, the, the setup and the assist that he was able to get on Xavier Willett's goal, the only goal for the Penguins in that game, was nice. And if you rewind that play about three or four seconds, you'll see something that's probably more impressive and something that's probably more conducive to Mike Sullivan liking him is he forced the turnover. His forechecking forced the turnover that started the sequence, and then, of course, he gets the puck when he cycles back and supports the puck. He gets the puck, sends it down low to Xavier Ouellette, and Ouellette with a beautiful backhand shot to score the goal. That was obviously the highlight for Jansen Harkins. But what you saw throughout the game, the physicality, the ability to just be a prick, right? Josh Getzoff came on tip of the iceberg before training camp started. I think it was actually the opening day of training camp, and that's what he said about Vinny Henestrosa. Right? That's what he said about Nolachari. He said, listen, the Penguins, they don't have many guys like that. They don't have many pricks. So if you're a guy like that and can play that style, it's going to separate you in this camp. Well, Jansen Harkins came in and immediately showed that side to his game. Not to mention, he does have an offensive, you know, upside. I mean, you look at his numbers in the AHL and you just ask yourself, man, if this guy could ever translate that offensive upside into the NHL, he'd be a really good bottom six player. He scored, I believe, 25 and 25. I'll look that up to get the exact numbers last year for the Winnipeg Jets at the AHL level. It just has never translated to the NHL with the offense. But defensively, it has. And that's the thing with the Pittsburgh Penguins because they're looking for players that have that offensive potential, they're hoping that they unlock that offensive potential this year, but they are more inclined to give you a shot 
if you can back it up with stellar defensive play. Harkins has been good defensively when he's reached the NHL level. He's been good offensively at the AHL level. Here are his numbers from last year when he played for the Manitoba Moose of the AHL. 44 games played, 25 goals, 25 assists for 50 points. Stellar offensive output at the American Hockey League. If he can translate that to, obviously not a point-per-game guy, but if he could translate that to 12 goals, 13, 15 even goals in the NHL, and 35 to 40 points, then he is a bottom six guy that is contributing in a solid way for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Considering the rest of the game that he's able to bring, you know, that would be a solid addition for the Pittsburgh Penguins and a solid waiver claim by Kyle Dubas. And again, this is all me, you know, biting my tongue because I didn't give the kid a shot. You know, sometimes you get it wrong and I got it wrong on him. I got it wrong on Redeem Zahorna this preseason. There's a reason that I'm not coaching the Pittsburgh Penguins. And that's a piece of humble pie that Mike Sullivan has served me over the past two weeks, which sometimes you got to get put back in line. That's fine by me. Uh, speaking of Redeem Zahorna, Certainly become one of the top stories at camp once again this year. He was last season and then just didn't do enough to make the roster. Penguins put him on waivers. He was claimed and he was gone. Didn't come back to the Pittsburgh Penguins until this offseason gets another opportunity and once again establishes himself early in camp. This time, though, it's the consistency. He's been able to stay at the top of his game no matter where he's been playing, right? Proven that they could be solid contributors from the early going for the Pittsburgh Penguins, and that's what they've been looking for. And that's the true meaning of the competition here. And that's why we said, coming into training camp, this is the most open competition the Penguins have had in over five years, probably, and as Mike Sullivan said, the entire time that Sullivan has been the head coach of the Pittsburgh Penguins, the most competition and the most open competition. Because guess what? Redeem Zahorna has outperformed everybody, and he's still there. There's no politics to that. He just outperformed and outworked everybody. Jansen Harkins did come in late, but guess what? He didn't come in and do nothing and still get the opportunity. He's impressed in the 48 to 72 hours that he's been in Pittsburgh and certainly must have been showing something in Winnipeg to make Kyle Dubas want to reach out and claim him off of waivers. Now, that leaves two other guys. I said there's two spots. I talked a lot about Harkins and Zahorna, and listen, this might be another case of humble pie for me. I feel like those two guys have the inside track on those two spots because the other two, not going to lie, they haven't impressed me. They just haven't impressed me. Now, Colin White looked good on Wednesday, I'll say that, but when it comes from, from wire to wire in camp and considering the fact that the Penguins just acquired Jansen Harkins off waivers, I don't think they're going to want to place him back on waivers. And the fact that Redeem Zahorna is a guy that Kyle Dubas has now acquired twice, right? He acquired him last year off waivers, and he acquired him this year. I don't know if two guys on PTOs are going to get that opportunity. Again, seemingly, they should be given one last shot to earn a contract tonight. They're on the roster. Whether or not they get in the lineup is a different story. But, I mean, I just I don't see the potential for them to just overturn Harkins and Zahorna going into tonight. Again, that's why this is the last chance to make a first impression. If Zahorna has a horrible game and Harkins has a horrible game and Austin Wagner looks great, maybe things change. Things do change in this league. But as far as entering tonight, the feel and the vibe that I get is that Jansen Harkins and Redeem Zahorna are sitting 
in a really good position to be able to make the lineup. We'll see what happens. Two spots seemingly available. You look at the lineup yesterday at practice, and you can see it, right? You can see where the spots are. It's it's pretty plain as day. Let me bring it up real quick, and, the, uh, and then we'll head home for the day. But O'Connor practiced with Crosby and Rust. Gensel doing a rotation. It seems like he's working his way back in. Smith played with Malkin and Raquel. That's an NHL line. No questions that all three of them are making the roster. Fourth line is Nieto, Achari, and Car- Carter. That's an NHL line. No question that those three are going to make the roster. But then you have White, Eller, Harkins, and Zahorna all rotating on the third line. Again, seems like Wagner's on the outside looking in. He's not in any of those line rushes. Zahorna was rotating with White and Harkins. It seems like it could be those three. It certainly does. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens tonight. But the Penguins, it, it's been a a quick two weeks, but it has certainly been a journey through two weeks to try to find their bottom six. We'll have more answers later tonight, and we'll certainly have more answers by the time we come to you on Monday because that is the day the Pittsburgh Penguins have to finalize their roster and figure out who is going to be playing for them on Tuesday against the Chicago Blackhawks. But that's going to do it for this episode of Iceberg to Go. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, you can find us on YouTube at Inside the Penguins or anywhere you get your podcasts from.